So as 2023 comes to an end and the world of graphic design continues to just develop, I wanted to showcase what basically the trends or the year in review of 2023 and effects that kind of trended around and also at the same time, just some really cool ideas to use for the rest of your life. So why not? Just before we start, the number one in my heart for the record, the everything pack. It is always gonna be the first link in the description that you guys see. It's all of my self by design products that you guys will get on purchase, plus all future products free. Alongside with that, though, we also do have a Discord community with over 2,100 members of genuinely active, supportive, thoughtful, feedback seeking, advice given homies. So it's just a good place to be if you guys haven't, you know, been a part of it. Check it out. Now let's hop into the video. All right, so my first favorite effect is the transparent gradient effect. It's super easy to do, especially for like urban design concepts. All you guys have to do is have your photo ready you wanna apply the effect to, whether if that's a person or an object. Next, drop in your favorite texture. I'm gonna use my bitmap textures from my bitmap texture pack. Size it up as you guys would like. However, after, add in a gradient map adjustment and clipping mask it to your overlay texture. Now, change your color on the gradient map where the shadow or the left anchor is your color of choice and the right anchor or your highlight color is switched to black. Then double click on your texture layer to hop into the layer styles. Under the blending options, under blend if, hold alt to split the anchor of the underlying layer options white anchor and move it to the left to allow the highlights of your original picture to pop through. If you also want to, under the current layer, you can split the black anchor just a little bit to also kind of have that balance as well. I mean, it's super simple. And as you can see it, I think it's pretty cool. Now, I want to show you guys this really awesome ink bleed effect for your typography. Start with your text of choice or multiple text layers combined together as a smart object, if you guys prefer. Then apply filter, blur, Gaussian blur at about 10 pixels. After apply another blur, but however, this time it's filter blur, radial blur at about seven. But make sure your blur amount is on spin and the quality is on best. Finally, go into your adjustment layers and choose a threshold. You can move your threshold anchor to the right for additional blur or towards the left for less blur. To actually extract this effect, group everything together and head into select, color range, and select back on your canvas to whatever color your text happens to be. So for me, it's black. This will take a marquee selection of the overall text effect, then go to your adjustments and choose a solid color. Now you can actually confidently change the blend mode and kind of move it around a lot more easier. Now, something else I really love is applying bitmap as like an effect, which also in context kind of feels like a halftone effect, but just like a little bit more controllable and customizable too. Either way, all you guys have to do is take your photo and go to image mode and grayscale to prep it for a black and white. If you want to, you can also use a levels adjustments under image and actually harshen the contrast some more. Either way, after you're done, you have to go back into image, select on mode, and then click bitmap. For the table that shows up, you wanna make sure your output resolution is 300. Then press okay. And for the new table, your frequency could be anywhere from six to around 200. And of course the shape itself is up to your preference. What frequency will do for you here is the lower it is, the wider the pixels or bit mapping seems to collect the data. And the higher it is, the more pixels that are in between. I personally think it's like a really cool effect and can easily be like a starred treatment in like an upcoming campaign. So I'm also gonna add halo lights to this video because I feel like every time we add it, someone has like their awakening moment and they're just looking for something that kind of makes the, the rest of the project kind of just better. And it's honestly really easy to get a basic version of a halo light down. Start by applying a light source behind your object or person. That could be obviously taking a complementary color and then clicking a few times in the background with a soft brush or basically zero hardness. Then with that same color on a new clipping mask layer above your photo, make your hardness anywhere between 30 and 60% and slowly go around the edge with a smaller brush that adds a very small line of color, maybe two to three inches on the edge of your photo. After after making another new clip mask layer, this time though, the layer mode should be set to linear dodge add. As well as using a slightly darker color and a bigger brush, 0% hardness, and go around once again. This time going a little bit further out, but not completely on top of the subject. If you ever notice your color as well, it gets a bit lost when you're done, you can press control U, lower the lightness, and if you also need to, you can increase the saturation. Lastly, with one final new clip mask layer, as well as remaining 
painting on the linear dodge add and a way bigger brush select around once more but this time you can go way further on top of the subject when it's all said and done if the other lights below it are a little bit too harsh you can notice the edge you can simply click on them and then apply a gradient blur to help assist a little bit more and obviously do not forget to go completely around the actual subject that was just my example to actually be able to call it done however though the last one i want to show you is actually like a classic but the method behind it might actually help you guys out in the future with like another random cool effect it's called gradient mesh start with actually having your photo that you would like to apply it to now for this you want to sort of color correct your photo just a little bit so we're going to head over to filter camera raw filter and under color mixer choose the saturation tab and push all the anchors to the left to turn off any color i mean what you can also do is if you got like like a really cool accent color in the photo i would kind of leave that one because it just it makes it look cooler however then under effects you want to increase the texture and clarity to your liking you can never go wrong with a good amount of texture lastly under the lights tab adjust the highlights to push a little bit more lighter tones onto the photo now you guys want to exit out of camera raw filter and go into your adjustments and choose a gradient map you want to ensure that you're changing both of your anchors colors to a single color that you like with the leftmost anchor or your shadow anchor being a tad bit darker then select the layer mask of your gradient map head over to select color range you want to make sure you have these sampled colors selected and click around your photo to the perfect gradient mesh appears and you're done and so is the video so with that though I, I hope this video just treats as like a fun little summary of a lot of the cool effects that we ended up exploring in 2023 but also there's there's a few more so if you're like new like I would subscribe come around through go check the videos all that good stuff but honestly I just think it's a really fun video that just hopefully gives you a little more inspiration heading into your projects and maybe just like finding that perfect thing that you can add to your campaigns but with that, that is Seso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking pretty, guys. Little much love. Peace. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the everything pack. You know where it is. It's over here. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Love you.